Hello, I'm here to show you an easy way to bend conduit, pipe, or tube. Many people will tell you that the only way to do any bending is to either step on whatever needs to be bent or bend it over your knee. I have given hundreds of 5 to 10 minute one-on-one -on -one presentations teaching a better alternative. This presentation is being videotaped, so much of it will be read to assure that none of the important points are missed. Prior to being hired for a job, to bend conduit, pipe, or tube, the people in charge of hiring may decide to test you to determine your level of knowledge and competence. The following example demonstrates a simple two-part test that they may give you. The principles in this demonstration will work with any radius bender. This demonstration uses a bender with a 15 16 inch bend radius and dimensions to almost any bend will be located in charts on pages 8, 9, and 10 in an easy to understand workbook. If the dimension which you need is not in the workbook, you may calculate any bend for any radius by using the two simple formulas which are shown on page 6 in the same workbook. The following brief demonstration is only a small portion of the information contained in the workbook titled Conduit Tube Bending with Ease and Precision. Here is a copy of that book. As a demonstration, how long will it take you to lay out and bend a 6 inch square two dimensional box such as this using a bender with a 15 16 inch radius right here while bending 3 8 inch outside diameter stainless steel tube. This 6 inch square box measures 24 inches center to center on the center line of the tube around this box. The following demonstration will show you how to accurately measure, cut, mark and bend this 6 inch square box in only a few minutes. In addition, if you are given three pieces of tube measuring exactly 25 inches end to end, 24 inches end to end, and 23 inches end to end, which of these three pieces of tube would you use to bend this 6 inch square box that we discussed while generating the least amount of waste? This workbook explains with crystal clarity the answer to the previous question. You can easily figure out the length of any conduit, pipe, or tube configuration end-to-end -end measurement to within 1 16th of an inch prior to bending, regardless of the degree of the bends or the number of the bends. Once you learn this method, you will be a great bender. This workbook explains that you will need exactly 22 and 8 16 inches of tube to bend this 6 inch square box. Use a tube cutter such as this and cut one half inch off the end of the 23 inch end to end piece of tube to end up with a tube that is exactly 22 and 8 16 inches end to end. Sketch the layout that you will be bending. Your sketch does not need to be drawn to scale and since no conduit, pipe, or tube is continuous unless it is welded. Bisect one side of this square box so that you will have five dimensions instead of four dimensions. Four sides is four dimensions, but since one side is being bisected, you're going to have five dimensions. Your sketch shows four each 90 degree bends. Use the tube, which was cut exactly 22 and 8 16 inches long. Since you bisected one side of the 6 inch square box, your first end to center line mark measurement on the tube will be, so let me use this tube, will be at 3 inches from the end. You can see right here we've got a 3 inch mark. After you mark that, then you take a very handy little tube spoon marker and I've used, I've used the find tip magic marker to mark the tube. Now you take this tube spoon marker which is described on page 11 in this workbook, you line the center line of the tube spoon marker up with that center line mark that you put on the tube. From that center line mark, you mark your takeoff mark, you mark your arc mark, then you slide the center line mark over the arc mark which was on the tube 
and where the takeoff mark is from the tube spoon marker, you put a reference mark. From that reference mark, you will then measure six inches to, to your right to get to your next center line. You'll do exactly the same thing with the tube spoon marker again, lining the center line up with the center line, marking your two outside bends, sliding your center line over to your right, and putting a new reference mark on the tube. From that reference mark, you will again measure six inches over, and at that six inch mark, you will then put the center line mark on the tube. You will mark your takeoff mark, your arc mark, and once again, you will slide over and you'll mark a new reference mark. From that third bend, you will again measure from your reference mark six inches over to a new center line. From that center line, you will, you will once again put your center line of your tube spoon marker over that center line, mark your takeoff mark, mark your arc mark, slide it over, and from this reference mark to the end of the tube will measure exactly three inches. You will have used exactly 22 and 8 sixteenths inches of tube to mark this piece of tube. Now once you're done marking it, use a tube spoon, use a tube ferrule, slide it on the tube, and using your fine tip magic marker at the first three marks at each bend, circle the tube all the way around. Do it at all four bends. So you'll have three marks at this bend, three marks at your second bend, three marks at your third bend, and three marks at your fourth bend. You do not have to mark the reference mark. The reference mark is only on there to be able to lay out the tube and to do a good job of laying out the tube. Now once you're going to, once you have these marks on, you can take your tube spoon, you can take your tube bender, put your tube bender on, and if you line the zero mark of your tube bender up with the mark on your left hand side, it's a little difficult to do upside down, and then you put the bender in place, you bend this mark down till it hits this mark, and you'll have a perfect 90 degree bend. That will be a left hand bend. If you want to make a right hand bend, and many times you have to because of space considerations, you just flip the tube 180 degrees, you lock the other, the takeoff or the arc mark, onto that zero mark, you lock your bender in place, and now you bend down till this reference mark lines up with that mark, and you'll have a perfect 90 degree bend no matter which way you bend it. When you are done, you will have bent a perfect square. This demonstrates the quickest and easiest way to learn to do any bending. Knowledge is a very valuable tool. By using the information contained in this workbook, you will easily be able to bend boilermaker tube layouts, conduit layouts, decorative plumbing lines, a frame for a hot rod, tube fitting layouts, or whatever you need to bend. For each copy of this workbook that you order, send $13 by check or money order to Conduit Tube Bending, 1483 Cardinal Lane, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54313. For shipping and handling, include $2 per workbook for one or two workbooks. For 3 to 10 workbooks, include $5 total for shipping and handling. And for 11 or more workbooks, include $10 total for shipping and handling. Thank you.